Welcome to the course on green technologies for African micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. Today, we will cover the fourth of the six modules of this course. In this lecture, we will discuss the concept of green financing, especially focusing on climate finance and its relevance for African businesses. This module has the following learning objectives. First, it will outline the nature of impact financing or impact investing for inclusive businesses. Second, it will discuss the concept of green and climate finance and its relevance for green and sustainable businesses. Third, the module will explain impact measurement, outline the various impact assessment standards such as B Lab and life cycle assessment. Finally, it will review the nature of certification programs and eco labels. Green and inclusive businesses go by many names, including sustainable businesses, social businesses social enterprises, triple bottom line businesses, etc. According to Professor Colin Mayer from the University of Oxford, these businesses have a distinct purpose to produce profitable solutions to the problems of people and planet. Green or sustainable businesses are businesses that create profit by solving the problems of the planet. Inclusive or social business are businesses that create profit by solving the problems of people or society. Like all businesses, green and inclusive businesses create financial return or profit which is essential for their survival. They also create positive social impact, such as poverty reduction and environmental impact, such as emissions reduction. Green businesses that create environmental benefit are eligible for green finance. Inclusive businesses that create social benefit are eligible for impact finance. The kind of green or impact finance businesses can get depends on the level of financial return and impact they create. As shown in the figure, businesses that have low financial return and low impact will struggle to get any kind of financing Businesses that have high financial return but low impact can get funding from traditional sources, example, banks and stock markets. Businesses that have low financial return but high impact can get funding from philanthropic sources such as grants from foundations. Businesses with high return and high impact can access impact or green finance. Depending on the relative importance of impact compared to financial return, these businesses can be impact first or profit first. There are different types of impact finance providers. Among others, these include stock markets, venture capitalists, 
private equity funds, accelerators, and incubators, government banks or agencies, and international NGOs are also major impact finance providers. Businesses can secure one of five different types of financial instruments. One, equity can be secured by selling ownership share in return for funds. Two, debt can be secured by taking out a loan with an interest payment. Three, grant often takes the form of gifts that do not have to be paid back. For guarantee is a promise given by a guarantor to take responsibility for the borrower in case of default in payments. Five, mezzanine is a kind of fund that blends equity and debt finance. The seniority of a financial instrument indicates its level of risks. Senior debit has a relatively lower risk, so it is also has low interest rates. Relative to equity, all types of debt can be considered less risky and hence more senior. This is because borrowers are paid back their loans before equity owners can get their dividends. As shown in the figure, high risky businesses can secure equity or mezzanine finance. These kinds of funds are often secured from developmental financial institutions donors or from impact investors and venture capital firms. Businesses with relatively low risk can get junior or senior debt with relatively low interest rates. These kinds of funds can be secured from institutional investors or commercial banks and microfinance institutions. The impact investing landscape has a diversity of major players that are active at global, continental, and regional levels. This includes development agencies such as USAID and SIDA multilateral development banks like the IFC and the African Development Bank, private investors such as JP Morgan, Chase, and Citibank, and philanthropic organizations such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Rockefeller Foundation. A catalog of major impact investors can be found using the web link and QR code at the bottom of the screen. The kind of impact finance a business needs depends on its life cycle. Young startups in their early stage of growth are risky because the profitability of their business models is not time tested. Typically, young ventures run losses for a few years and hope to break even in the future. Because of their riskiness, these businesses can secure funding only 
from family and friends and foundations that offer grants. Incubators and angle investors can also provide early phase investing. During their expansion stage, startups need a lot of capital for investment. Although expanding businesses typically are not yet profitable, they have better financial access because they have relatively lower risks. They can secure small loans from microfinance institutions, debt finance from banks, or investment from venture capitalists. Businesses that survive the expansion phase typically have started to generate profits. Their pool of potential financial sources is therefore greater and includes stock markets and banks. We will now turn to the topic of climate finance. Please use the QR code or website link at the bottom right of the screen to watch a short YouTube video that introduces the concept of climate finance. Climate finance is a type of green finance that is funded and managed transnationally to finance climate change adaptation and mitigation. Developing countries have made very little contribution to global warming, but they are impacted most by the negative consequences. Developed countries have committed to provide climate finance that can support governmental and private projects in developing countries that contribute to climate change mitigation and adaptation. There are a broad range of public and private sources for climate finance. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC, manages some of the largest public funded climate funds. The UNFCC administers two major climate funds, the Green Climate Fund and the Global Environment Facility that mainly focuses on biodiversity protection. Multilateral funds are climate funds channeled through development banks such as the African Development Bank and development agencies such as UNDP. These funds typically come from governments of developed countries. Bilateral funds are funds channeled to developing countries based on bilateral agreements with the donor country. For example, the EU has a large fund called Global Europe that sponsors climate change related projects in developing countries. Other UN conventions also have funds that can sponsor climate-related issues. Finally, there are also risk transfer mechanisms such as the Clean Development Mechanism. These mechanisms allow advanced countries to offset their emissions by investing on emission-reducing projects in developing countries. A large network of organizations facilitates the flow and development of climate finance. These include the following. Administrators of international climate funds, such as the Green Climate Fund and the Global Environment Facility, Multinational development banks, such as the World Bank, that have multiple member countries 
and provide loans and grants for climate related projects. Governments that provide public money for climate finance. The private sector, including banks, investors, and insurers have mobilized money towards sustainable development. Among the different climate funds, the Green Climate Fund, GCF, is one of the largest and most important ones. The GCF was formed in 2010 under the United Framework Convention on Climate Change, the UNFCCC. It supports developing countries to pursue climate-friendly projects. It combines mitigation and adaptation projects, each with a half share. Its private sector facility provides direct and indirect finance to the private sector in the form of grants and low interest concessional loans. The GCF is intended to mobilize 100 billion US dollars per year by the year 2020. However, its actual mobilization currently is only 20 billion US dollars. The Green Climate Fund has financed a project aimed at enhancing resilience in Thailand through effective water management and sustainable agriculture. Climate change has increased the frequency of heavy rains in Thailand, increasing the risk of severe floods. There is also risk of drought during the dry season linked to rising temperatures. Therefore, finance is needed to enable this region to adapt to this consequence of climate change. The Green Climate Fund has provided funding for food, control and irrigation, infrastructure and other related projects that improved climate change adaptation. Without mitigation measures, emissions from the transport sector in Costa Rica are estimated to rise by 44% by the year 2050. To help prevent these emissions, the Green Climate Fund has funded a project to install an electric light rail transit system in San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica. This new rail system will be powered by more than 98% renewable energy. Please use the QR code or website link at the bottom of the right of the screen to watch a short YouTube video on the Green Climate Fund. The Green Climate Fund targets projects that are selected based on the following criteria. Impact potential or the potential to achieve the fund's climate change mitigation and adaptation objectives. Paradigm shift potential or the potential to catalyze impact beyond the investment period. Sustainable development potential, that is the potential to provide wider benefits. Needs of recipient, that is the vulnerability and financing needs 
of the recipient country. Country ownership or the interest of the beneficiary country and its capacity to implement the project. Efficiency and effectiveness, in other words, the economic and financial soundness of the project. This slide shows a few examples of national green financing mechanisms available in different African countries. National development banks and multilateral development banks play an important role in channeling green financing from developed countries to Africa. Take a moment to reflect on the following questions. What kinds of climate or green financing opportunities are available in your country? How should you devise or adapt your business to qualify for these green funding programs? We now turn to the topic of social and environmental impact. As the quote from Sir Ronald Cohen indicates, until now, investors and businessmen have been preoccupied with the concepts of risk and return. With the growing importance of green and impact financing, investment in the 21st century is likely to be concerned with the three concepts of risk, return, and impact. Social and environmental impacts can be both negative and positive. Negative impacts are adverse effects the company is generating, including environmental costs, such as CO2 emissions and plastic waste, as well as social costs, such as adverse health effects and safety risks, etc. Positive impacts are beneficial outcomes coming from a company's activities, including environmental benefits, such as reforestation and social benefits, such as job creation and gender equality. Some businesses regularly measure their social and environmental impact just in the same way they measure their financial profitability. Measuring social and environmental impact is needed for at least three reasons. One, first, businesses have a broad range of internal and external stakeholders who could be interested to know the impact they are creating. Impact measurements is needed to communicate impact to these stakeholders such as employees, shareholders, and the government. Two, second, impact measurement enables businesses to track their own performance for future improvement. The third impact measurement enables businesses to benchmark their performance against competitors. Setting goals is a prerequisite before impact measurement. You also need 
an impact pathway that shows how those goals will be achieved. If you have clear goals, impact measurement can help you to track your progress. There are numerous assessment frameworks, tools, and metrics that you could use. Different metrics and frameworks are used for different purposes. Some of the frameworks or metrics commonly used for measuring social and environmental impact are individual indicators, key performance indicators, sustainability reporting indicators, for example, GRI, B-Lab, IRIS, material flow analysis, life cycle assessments, etc. Impact measurement should be preceded by a clear set of goals and an impact pathway that shows how these goals will be achieved. The impact pathway outlines how the impact is created by identifying the inputs and activities the business needs. The impact pathway also shows what is created by identifying the outputs and outcomes involved in creating impact. The impact pathway further indicates why the outputs and outcomes are created by specifying the desired social change. For example, certain interventions could have the desired social impact of reducing malaria infection and mortality rates. For such an intervention, the inputs are human and financial resources, including workers and partners. The activities are the production and distribution of mosquito bed nets. The output is the number and quality of mosquito nets produced and delivered. The outcome is the usage of mosquito bed nets in the target population. The impact is a reduction in malaria infection and mortality rates. Having such a clear impact pathway enables us to understand why our measured impacts are good or why they are not as good as planned. In sum, impact measurement should be an integral part of your business strategy. The process involves the following circular steps. First, identify the social or environmental issue the business wants to address and specify clear goals. Second, make the business case by developing a clear impact pathway analysis. Third, track progress during implementation. Fourth, measure impact. Fifth, go back to step one and refine your goals depending on the results of your impact measurements. There are multiple impact measurement frameworks. One of them is the B Impact Assessment Framework created by B Lab. It measures social and environmental impact using a framework with six components. One, governance, covering accountability and transparency issues. Two, workers, including job growth, compensation, and benefits and the work environment. Three, 
community, covering suppliers and impact on local population. Four, environment, including energy use, sustainability of facilities, supply chain and manufacturing issues. Five, impact business models, covering beneficial products of services, targeted underserved communities and beneficial supply chains. Six, and final, the impact created on customers. Based on this assessment framework, businesses that score a minimum 80 points become certified B Corp. They receive a certificate indicating that they have been assessed for their social and environmental impacts. There are currently 5,000 B Corp certified companies, including hundreds in Africa. The B Lab Impact Assessment Framework is only one of many available frameworks. This slide shows how ING Bank assesses the sustainability performance of its borrowers. The bank measures sustainability along three dimensions, financial, social, and environmental. As you can see in the table, dozens of indicators are used for assessing business sustainability. The final part of this lecture will cover the topics of certification programs. As indicated earlier, B Lab assesses the sustainability of businesses and provides certificates for those with sufficiently high scores. There are a broad range of similar certification programs. Each logo you see on the screen represents a specific certification program. Sustainability certification involves an independent external body that audits an organization's sustainability performance to verify that it conforms to the requirements specified in a specific certification standard. Certificates issued by accredited certification bodies are considered as having increased credibility. Examples are fair trade certifications, ISO certification and B Corp certification, which was discuss discussed earlier. Fair trade certification confirms that a product such as coffee, tea, or cocoa is produced following principles that protect the rights of marginalized producers. This enables workers and farmers in developing countries to get a fair price in their international markets. To get fair trade certification, Producers must be audited by an accredited certification agency to ensure that they meet the minimum requirements. Fair trade gives many benefits to farmers in developing countries. These include improved market access in developed countries, reliable supply chains, and resilient communities and businesses. Coffee is the second most traded commodity in the world after oil. Fair trade provides many benefits for coffee farmers in developing countries. It eliminates poor social and environmental practices in coffee farmers. It guarantees a minimum income for coffee farmers by protecting prices from being eroded through competition. Farmers receive a fair trade premium on their prices, which is invested on building their capabilities. 
improve agricultural practices and greater professionalism in coffee farming and trade. Greater brand recognition for certified farmers. Eventually, this contribution to poverty reduction. The income of small scale farmers will be greater and they will receive better support from corporations. Search for green business funding programs available in your country and industry. This could be from the International Financing Corporation, the IFC, the African Development Bank, AFDB, your country's national development bank, local banks and microfinance institutions, or impact investors like the Acumen Fund and Global Innovation Fund. A list of impact funds active in Africa can be found on the catalog here. Select one green funding program that interests you or is relevant to your business. Study the funding requirements and conditions. What are the conditions required for assessing this funding? How do you describe the impact return risk requirement of this funding program? What does your business need to change to acquire this funding? For example, impact measurement, certification requirements, etc. Discuss how securing such funding could affect your business in terms of financial, social, and environmental impact. Using at least 300 words provide responses to the above questions. Note, this exercise will be a part of your final project that we will expect you to submit at the end of this course. Thank you for your attention and for making time to watch this lecture. The next lecture will be posted on the online platform early next week. Until the next lecture, goodbye.